hello you guys so today is october um 14 2024 and it's like 11 something p.m i'm not sure but the lord has been speaking to me and so that's why i'm here i was on facebook earlier and i had made a post today and after i made that post i was getting ready to make another post in that post, I was getting ready to, to say how, um, I was getting ready to say that basically it doesn't matter, um, which president wins, whether it's Kamala or Trump, because both of them are judgment falling on America. And I was getting ready to say something along that line and I kept writing and kept writing and then I just felt like instead of making a post about it because videos and writing posts are so different and I'm like, I could say way more if I just make the video. And I felt God leading me to just make the video. And so that's what I'm getting ready to do is make this video. Um, about what the Lord has been sharing with me, what he's been saying to me, and just give you guys an insight on what's coming and what's going on. And so as I was writing the post, I was talking about, first of all, I was saying like, judgment is here and we can see it by our um, options of presidents because as a Christian, as a Christian, I'm not talking to anybody else. I'm not talking about the fans of Jesus Christ. I am talking to the followers of Jesus Christ, okay? I am talking to those who are really for the things of God and his kingdom. Because if you stand with God and you believe his Bible, which is his word, his, the Holy Bible, which is his word, is true, then you see that both have evil agendas. We have Trump and then, what is it, Project 25. We have Kamala who wants to, and I may be saying her name wrong, <laughs> forgive me, but anyways, like, and her agenda with a lot of the LGBTQ rest of the letters, I'm not sure, so <laughs> forgive me if I'm offending um, those who are in that community. Um, but regardless, both agendas are to push wickedness and evilness and covering it up and masking with some good, right? But if it be true that they want to allow, Lord help me, tr transgender, like your kids to pick their gender and go under surgery to change their gender at a young age, that is pure wickedness. And to change your gender in general is evil in the sight of the Lord because then you are saying God you are wrong and my emotions are right and if we've learned throughout time like I've learned that your emotions can be your lowercase g God and you can worship them how you feel more than what is true that in itself is evil okay and so good is good depending on what the Lord says is good and evil is evil, depending on what the Lord says is evil. The Bible is right. Our thoughts, our opinions, they don't matter. If you are a Christian and you believe God word, God's word is true, then what we come up with means nothing. And so anyways, after all of that, so I was getting ready to write this post and I was saying how every time I think of the election, God always brings this scripture to my mind. And so I decided 
you know, like, I'm just gonna go ahead and spend time with God to see what I'll, what all he has to say, and then I'll make the video, and so at 8 40 p.m. I'm writing down, and this is all that the Lord has said, and I'm going to tell you what he says as long as what he shares as I'm literally making this video. And so he always reminds me of 1 Samuel 8. And so we're going to start with 4. And this is what it is. Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah. And they said to him, Behold, you have grown old, and your sons do not walk in your ways. And I want you guys to hold on to your sons do not walk in your ways. And I want you to hold on to that, knowing that Samuel was a prophet of God, chosen, called, trained by God. And he was walking in the ways of the Lord. So we're going to come back to that part later. And so now, let me continue. So five says, and they said to him, behold, you have grown old and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now appoint for us a king for us to judge us like all the nations. <laughs> and the Lord is like, covet. They are coveting. They want what the other people have when they have the true living God. And so I wrote down prophets, and that says, are the mouthpiece of God. They hear from God and tell the nations what God is saying. So that is what a prophet is. A prophet hears from God and shares with the people what God is saying. They speak on behalf of God by saying exactly what God tells them to say, not adding, not taking away. And so then it says, and tell the nations what God is saying. Okay, so that's what I said that prophets are. So six, but the thing was displeasing in the sight of Samuel when they said, give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed to the Lord. The Lord said to Samuel, listen to the voice of the people and regard to all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them. And I don't know about y'all, but that's sad. When you have to hear the Lord say, they have rejected me. That's a sad day when people start rejecting God. Mm. Somebody who truly just loves us and wants the best. And oh my God. Okay, eight. Like all the deeds which they have done since the day that I have brought them up from Egypt, even to this day, and that they have forsaken. And forsaken means to abandon and to desert. And he says, and they have forsaken me and served other gods. So they are doing to you also. Now listen. He said, now then, listen to their voice. However, you shall solemnly warn them and tell them of the procedure of the king who will reign over them and so in this the people are literally saying because the children of israel have already the true living god god done did so much fought so many battles got them through from egypt the hands of satan right and God literally destroys their enemies, parts the Red Sea to lead them into freedom, into a land which God had promised their fathers. <laughs> Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So we are on to Moses now, who God has risen up and 
made a leader and a prophet to deliver Israel. So now we are going back. Okay. And so that is what God is currently talking about. <sighs> when he's saying like, how to deliver them from Egypt. Okay. And so now number 10. So Samuel spoke all the words of the Lord to the people who have asked of him a king. Nevertheless, so now we're on 19. Nevertheless, the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel. And they said, no, but there shall be a king over us that we also understand this. They already have the living God fighting for them, protecting them. And you guys, the, the thing is, is like we keep going back to Egypt because even when God was delivering them, he gave them manna. They had food in the wilderness as he took them from Satan's hand, from the Pharaoh, and he frees them, taking them out of slavery and bondage. He frees them, he feeds them, he leads them, he guides them, he protects them. You guys, like... <sighs> Nevertheless, the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel, and they said no. But there shall be a king over us, that we also may be like all the nations, that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. What happened here? They already forgot what God has done for them and who God is. 18. And he said... To the sons of Israel, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I brought Israel up from Egypt and I delivered you from the hand of the Egyptians and from the power of all the kingdoms that were oppressing you. But you have today rejected your God who delivered you from all your calamities and your distresses. Yet you have said, no, but set a king over us. Now, therefore, present yourselves before the Lord by your tribes and your clans. Thus Samuel brought all the tribes of Israel near, and the tribes of Benjamin were take, was taken by Lot. That was 20 now skipping going 24 Samuel said to all the people do you see him whom the Lord has chosen surely there is no one like him among all the people so all the people shouted and said long live the king and before I go further in case you have not caught on to what the Lord is saying is do not put your trust in man, not in the president, not in your cousin, sister, brother, parent, none, none. It is God who will deliver you. And the crazy thing is, help me, Lord, help me, Lord. Children of Israel, children of God, your trust is supposed to be in God and God alone. You should not be neglecting God. Stop reading your Bible. Stop praying and fasting. Stop obeying the commandments of the Lord because you think a president is going to save you. Because you think the president is going to be your king. Judgment is here. And believe me. If your faith and your trust is not in the Lord and you have placed it in the hands of man, you will die by what's coming. <sighs> the famine, the pestilence, and the sword. Only God will save 
you. Only God will save you. And you have God. You don't need a lowercase g God. A human. And that is what Israel is doing here. They already have God. King of kings, Lord of lords, God of all gods. But they want to be like the world. So now they want to put their trust in a king that is human, that can die like we can and like they can in replacement of God. What a dangerous place that is to be. What a dangerous place to be. And now God is saying to Samuel, give the people what they want. For they're not rejecting you, but they're rejecting me. But warn them of what comes with putting their trust in a king. And he tells them all these things that the king will require of them. And they're like, I want to be like the world. Mm. And may I ask? God ain't lost not one battle. And as you're reading the Bible in Joshua, like this already happened and God literally fought for them. Help me, Lord. <sighs> there is no one like him amongst all the people. So all the people shouted as your president wins, you're so happy and you're shouting because you got who you voted for, right? You got what you wanted. You got the one whom your trust is in, right? Forgetting about God because he's no longer your savior. He's no longer your defender. He's no longer the one who got you out of your Egypt, your slavery, your bondage, your shackles, and your chains. He done got you out of that past life, brought you in to a new covenant with Jesus, saved you, but your faith is in man. We should fear, not man, but the one who can kill the soul, right? The body and soul and send it to hell. Only man can kill the body. God help me. Deuteronomy 6 1 is where we are now. Because this is what the Lord commands of you and what he commanded of them. And so, if you're familiar with the Bible, then you know Deuteronomy is way before we get to Samuel, okay? This is in Moses' days now. And this is Moses speaking. So. Deuteronomy 6 1. Now, this is the commandment, the statutes, and the judgment which the Lord, your God, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, your God has commanded me to teach you. <laughs> and it's literally, if you're not familiar, me to teach you as I read everything that is written. That you might do them in the land where you are going over to possess it. Now, this is the promise for those who are faithful unto God. Listen to this. You are not making these sacrifices to choose God over everything for nothing. He has a promise for you. And so too, it says, so that you and your sons and your daughters, I'm adding daughters because the Lord said to, and your grandsons and your granddaughters might fear the Lord your God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you all the days of your life and that your days may be prolonged. Oh, Israel. And Israel, when God is saying, oh, Israel, if you have not watched my Jacob series, Israel is Jacob, okay? Before he wrestled, right, with Jesus. Israel is Jacob. Okay, and so Jacob is the past Jacob. Israel is the new Jacob when God renames him. And the 12 tribes of Israel are the sons of 
Jacob, a.k.a. Israel. And so when you go through just the lineage, it's Abraham, it's Isaac, it's Jacob, and his 12 tribes. So as we read the Bible and it says, your father is Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, right? Us who gave our lives to the Lord, our fathers, our forefathers are now Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so when God is saying the sons of Israel, he's talking about his children, literally, not the place. Okay. He's talking about those who are born again in his family. Okay. And you can watch my Jacob series to get the revelation because it's so deep and it's so good. Okay. But I just want to throw that out there because he's talking to the children of God. Okay. And Jesus is even from what? The line of Judah, which is from the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay. So we're all in this lineage. And so, oh Israel, you should listen and be careful to do it, that it may be well with you and you may multiply greatly just as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has promised you in a land flowing with milk and honey. So... There's a land flowing of milk and honey for those of you who finish your race, who are obedient to God. He will lead you there. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. These words, which I am commanding you today, shall be on your heart. You shall talk of them diligently to your sons and daughters and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontals on your forehead. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. Then it shall come about when the Lord your God brings you into the land which he sworn to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you great and splendid cities which you did not build and houses full up or yeah, full of goods. And then it says, which you, I think, did not fill. <laughs> I did not fill. And he will fill. Uh oh, does that say listen? No. I think cisterns. It's a little sloppy, y'all read the passage okay <laughs> deuteronomy 6 verse 10 it says which you did not dig vineyards and olive trees which you did not plant and you eat and are satisfied then watch yourself that you do not forget the lord who brought you from the land of egypt Ugh. and this is a commandment till this day he said listen carefully to do this Ugh. Then he said, out of the house of slavery. <sighs> then watch yourself that you do not forget the Lord who brought you from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery. You shall fear only the Lord your God and you shall worship him and swear by his name. You shall not follow other gods, any of the gods of the people who surround you. You guys. We live in the world, but we are not of the world. We are of a different kingdom. You shall not follow other gods. Any, And these are lowercase g gods, by the way. And of the gods, lowercase g, of the people who surround you. As God was delivering Israel, they were being introduced to different cultures, different lifestyles, different nations and practices. And end up adapting and adopting some of these.
practices and we are even doing this in the days that we're living in now and god is saying do not follow other lowercase g gods any of the gods lowercase g of the people who surround you america america 15 for the lord your god in the midst of you is a jealous god otherwise the anger of the lord will be kindled against you and he will wipe you off the face of the earth judgment you guys what is coming and i want to say what is near it's really scary if you do not belong to god and you are not surrendered because it means you're loose uncovered for the devil <sighs> to kill steal and destroy man he wants your soul your mind your will and your emotions man he wants you in hell more than you want more than you want anything you can think of or imagine he wants your soul help me god 16 you shall not put your god to the test as you tested him in massa you shall diligently keep your commandments of the lord your god and his testimonies and his statutes which he has commanded you you shall do what is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with you and that you may go in and possess the good land which the Lord sworn to give your fathers. This is the plans he has for you. A good land flowing with milk and honey. 19. And then he says, by driving out all your enemies, <clears throat> you shall do what is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with you and that you may go in and possess the good land, which the Lord sworn to give your fathers by driving out all your enemies from before you as the Lord has spoken. <clears throat> prayer, guys, be a house of prayer, man. Because your enemies are also, <laughs> your enemies are spirits. Your enemies are principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world and wickedness in high places. 20. When your sons and daughters ask you in time to come saying, what do the testimonies and the statutes and the judgment mean, which the Lord our God commanded you? Then you shall say, dot 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 i put and then i said we were slaves in pharaoh and e we were slaves to pharaoh in egypt and the lord brought us from egypt with a mighty hand more with a mighty hand moreover the lord showed great and distress signs and wonders before our eyes against egypt pharaoh and all his household 23 he he, Lord, the Lord had me circle, he, and underline, brought us out from there in order to bring us in to give us the land which he has sworn to our father. So the Lord commanded us to observe all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God for our good always and for our survival as it is today. <clears throat> and then the Lord took me to seven and two. And I'm not sure if this is, and I think, okay, seven and two, and this is Deuteronomy. And when your Lord, your God delivers them before you and you defeat them, then you shall utterly destroy them. You shall make no covenants with them. When the Lord gives you an instruction, you shall make no covenant with them with the world listen he took me to first samuel 15 17 i mean seven it says so saul defeated the amalekites dot 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 and then he took me to eight he says but saul and the people spared ag ag i don't know how to say his name you guys the king of the 
Amalekites alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. Then 10. Then the word of the Lord came to Samuel saying, 11. I regret that I have made Saul king for he would, for he has turned his back from following me. And the Lord had me circle following me and underline regret and from and has not carried out my command. And Samuel was distressed and cried to the Lord all night. Then 12 talks about how Saul set up a monument of himself in Carmel. Mm, 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 mm. You guys, <sighs> help me, Jesus. Back to Deuteronomy 7 and 2. And then I'm continuing where it says, make no covenant with them. And then it says, and show no favor to them. Three, furthermore, you shall not intermarry with them. You shall not give your daughters to their sons, nor shall you take their daughters for your sons. For they will turn your sons away from following me. And then God reminded me of Solomon Solomon at one point. How he married all those wives. They practiced so many different traditions, practices. Read it. Okay. Then it says, to serve other gods. So, for they will turn your sons away from following me to serve other gods. Then the anger of the Lord will kindle against you. And he will quickly destroy you. Because judgment falls on the righteous and the unrighteous. 11. The Lord said to Moses, how long, and this is what the Lord is saying now, how long will this people burn me? And that means reject with disdain or contempt. And then disdain means the feeling that someone or something is unworthy of one's consideration or respect. And... That is what the Lord is saying. How long will this people reject me <laughs> and see me as unworthy, not worthy of even consideration? Then he says, and how long will they not believe in me? Despite all the signs which I have performed in their midst, and some of you know, you've seen, you've seen God, whether you obeyed him or not. You've seen his goodness. You've seen his miracles, his signs, his wonders. You've even heard of them from your mothers, your fathers, your grandparents and up. Friends, family, co-workers, you, you know. Then he said, I will smite them with pestilence and dispose them. And that means deprive someone of land, property, or other possession. Meaning, you won't make it to the, to the promised land that he's so deeply trying to get you to. If only you would obey. If only you would believe in him. If only you would stop rejecting him and putting your trust in man. Because they can't save you. Trump can't save you. Kamala can't save you. You can't even save you. You guys, this is a word of put your trust back in the Lord. Help me, Lord. 22. Surely all the men who have seen my glory and my signs, which I performed in Egypt and in the wilderness, yet have put me to the test these 10 times and have not listened to my voice. And remember, he's talking to Moses because he had sent Moses to Pharaoh 10 times. It was the 10th time Pharaoh actually let them go. But also, this is the word of now. Okay. Because his book, his holy Bible, 
just repeat itself. The blueprint, <laughs> nothing changes. Lord, like his structure, his structures, his laws, his commandments, his ordinances, his precepts, his statutes, like are all the same. It does not change. 23. Shall by no means see the land. I feel like I should go back to 22. Surely all the men who have seen my glory and my sign, which I have, which I performed in Egypt and in the wilderness, yet have put me to the test these 10 times and have not listened to my voice, shall by no means see the land which I have sworn to their fathers. Nor shall any of those who spurn me see it. 27. How long shall I bear with this evil congregation who are grumbling against me? I have heard the complaints of the sons of Israel, which they are making against me. Say to them as I live, says the Lord, just as you have spoken in my hearing. So I will surely do. So I will surely do anything to you who this word is actually for that fall on the side of vengeance of the Lord. Your corpse will fall in this wilderness. Even all the numbered men according to your complete numbers from 20 years old and upwards who have grumbled against me. Surely you shall not come into the land in which I sworn to settle you. 31. Your children, however, whom you said would become a prey, I will bring them in and they will know the land which you have rejected. Notice he said, you have rejected. You, by rejecting him. And his guidance and his commandments and his statutes. statutes. You rejected his promise. Your sons, this is 33, your sons will be shepherds. And then he said, had me, and then he highlighted, will suffer for your unfaithfulness. Because what people fail to realize is how generational curses are passed and how generational blessings are passed. You reap what your forefathers have done. So if you land on the side of vengeance from the Lord, then your seeds reap that until somebody in the lineage changes the trajectory like Abraham did. His father was selling idols and then God called Abraham and Abraham is the one who obeys God and brings the lineage back, even us, to the Lord. Do you, you get what I'm saying? Whoever your forefather served your mother's house your father's house if they're doing witchcraft or if they are you know serving satan and they're sold out agents for him or if they you know or if they are literally vessels of the lord and serve him then you will reap that of whom their altars are built unto until somebody breaks that so you can serve God, your parents, and then you don't. And now your kids will reap the mess and the havoc you made. Just like when somebody dies, like your parent dies, which I'm not speaking this into existence. So somebody's parent dies, not yours, okay? I won't even do that. I renounce that. No curses over here. Somebody's parent dies. And if they owe and have bills, the child will pick that up, right? And will have to pay off certain things, 
whether it's the mortgage, the car note, or the funeral cost. Like, the child suffers that. And so your sons will be shepherds and will suffer for your unfaithfulness. Man. And that goes to daughters too. And then 35. I, the Lord, have spoken. Surely this I will do to all the evil congregation who are gathered together against me in this wilderness. And then he gave me the revelation that the wilderness that you're getting ready to go into is the wilderness famine, the sword, and pestilence is how the death will, how you'll be destroyed. And you can go back and watch other videos. I talk a lot about this because God has been talking a lot to me about the famine that's coming, the pestilence that's coming, which are diseases and people who will die by the sword, which is the word of God by what he said coming to pass and literally violent death. And then he said, they shall be destroyed and there they will die. So 35, I the Lord have spoken, surely this I will do to all this evil congregation who are gathered together against me in this wilderness, the famine, the sword, and the pestilence. They shall be destroyed and there they will die. And I said to the Lord, is there anything else you want me to say? Just to confirm, you know, if there is there anything else you want to add? I flipped my Bible and this is what I saw. Acts 8, 33. In humiliation, his judgment was taken away. Who will relate his generation? For his life is removed from the earth. my god my god my god and that is the word of the lord but if i may help me you guys This is no joke, you guys. Like, it, it really isn't. And another thing, like, the Lord was saying to me when I was talking about Trump and Kamala is that regardless of what is put in the front of what they're saying they're going to do, both have evil agendas that have not been even brought to our eyes. And he was saying like, we don't even know their hearts. And I'm flipping through my Bible and I land on Jeremiah 17, nine. And it says, the heart is more deceitful than all else and is desperately sick. Who can understand it? And I'm also seeing 18 and 11, and I'm going to go to what's highlighted. Thus says the Lord, behold, I am fashioning calamity against you and devising a plan against you. Oh, turn back each of you from his evil way and reform your ways and your deeds. Hmm. But they will say it's hopeless, for we are going to follow our own plans, and each of us will act according to the stubbornness of his evil heart. And then 15, for my people have forgotten me. They burn incense to worthless gods, 
and they have stumbled from their ways, from the ancient past. Oh God, have mercy. Mm. I just heard him say, I will not. Mm. Mm. I'm hearing him say time is up, but um, mm. Mm. my Lord, have your way. And move us out the way. Have your way. Let your words be true and every man be a liar. Have your way, oh God. Have your way. Have your way. And may you preserve your children's coming in and going out, oh God. Have your way. In Jesus' name. May this fall on the ears of those who you are speaking to, oh God. May it pierce the heart of those who you want to convict and bring back to you. And for those who you just want to let them know what is coming, but their hearts are cold. Hmm. May this just be their warning. So when it happens, they know that you are the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and the God of all gods. Be seated on your heavenly throne, O God. Be lifted up high and mighty. May every knee bow and every tongue confess that you are Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Let every other name fade, O God. Let every other name fade. All glory be to you. All praise and all honor. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, you guys, I'm out.